Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All things but alert here with a kit reveal on Arwen. We're gonna jump right in and make it short and sweet because I think everyone is just getting eager to see what characters are gonna be required for Elrond. And without official confirmation, I would seriously start putting money on the fact that if Elrond is the first confirmed legendary and Arwen is now being announced as a marquee character, so it says marquee character here, which usually when they do marquee characters, they do marquee events. So there'll be an event that you can play through and unlock a partial amount of Arwen shards or unlock her at a certain star level. And then they'll probably have some kind of pack or chest you can buy to get her to a higher star ranking. So will they make you spend and get Arwen at five stars to then unlock Elrond the first go round? Very potentially. We talked about it in our LR video, so hopefully you're not too surprised here, but let's go ahead and jump into it. First of all, she is a support elf and has the Rivendell tag, all three of those, and a light character, obviously. And it says she's going to be best used with these two elves, Elro here and Liliel. Again, I would assume we're going to get Elodin at some point, and it just would make sense that Elrond would also fit in with this squad. So there are some other elf options we could potentially get in the future, but right now it's going to be kind of the Elrond family tree Again, this elf, she's very annoying in the battles I've faced her and just very tanky. So maybe she'll fit great with that squad, especially with how how many heals and cleanses are, are potential for the squad. So anyway, they mentioned those two right now, but don't be surprised if we get an Elodin, you know, kit reveal like this soon, uh, potentially as a marquee, or maybe they'll be, he won't be a marquee maybe, but just, you know, bear in mind that it could happen with Elodin as well. Now there are three skills and then a pass that we'll go through pretty quickly here. So the first one is the guarded slash. We get a description here that shows the ability at unlock as well as the ability at max upgrade so it'll you know be in between depending on what level you're at but it's going to start out with 90 percent damage and then double to 180 maxed out and it's going to start out with a 50 percent chance to grant one stack of defensive to the most wounded squad member and then maxed out it's going to guarantee that chance of defensive so i'm not sure if like along the way it'll it'll increase by like 10 percent increments or if it'll you know slowly go up like 25 percent and then max out but either way when it's maxed out, you will have a guaranteed stack of defensive going out to your most wounded squad member. The next one is called Deadly Earnest. It's kind of misleading here because Strider's sitting right here. And I I believe, if I remember correctly, from the battles we've seen her in, she does have some kind of a, a duet skill or a double skill with, with Strider. And there's this thing that says Deadly Duet here. So maybe that's what it was called previously. But there's the Deadly Earnest special ability, which has nothing to do with Strider. And it says attack the target for 130% damage and dispel one boon. And this one gets kind of crazy as you go along. It says at max upgrade, attack the target for 270% damage and dispel two boons, gain 20% turn meter and an additional 20% per boon on self. So if she has enough boons on her, which I have the idea that this squad is going to be kind of the opposite of the Isengard squad. The Isengard squad puts out a ton of banes and they just get like a lot of damage going out. I think this Rivendell squad could potentially be very high boon on themselves, which is going to be difficult for Isengard squad specifically to deal with, but they're going to be very high boon on themselves, very defensive, lots of heals, that kind of stuff. That would be my guess based on what we have so far. So anyway, she gains 20% turn meter and an additional 20% per boon on herself. So she could, in theory, use this ability and then just get an immediate another turn. So that could be used... Um, do pretty good effect at different times. So very interesting ability there. Then we have the Evening Star ability, which is just a support ability. It's going to cleanse one Bane from the two squad members with the most with the most Banes, and it's going to grant a stack of regeneration for one turn to the entire squad. And maxed out, this one gets kind of interesting as well. It is going to be a cleanse one Bane from all squad members. So a mass cleanse, you're gonna grant a stack of regeneration from one turn to all squad members, and an additional stack to squad members below 50% health and you're going to grant immunity, which means they cannot receive Banes. You're going to grant immunity to for one turn to the most wounded Rivendell squad member. So very cleansing, boon heavy. Again, the Isengard team is like this heavy Bane. You know, like these, these are going to be very like counter teams in terms of how they're run, which is not good for me because I like the Isengard team a lot. But this team is going to be probably obnoxious to deal with if you rely on landing Banes or if that's a part of what your team is doing. So anyway, that's the third one there. And the last one, or her passive, is the Light of Rivendell. It says the ability description at unlock is when a squad member drops below 50% health, there is a 50% chance to grant them one stack of nibble. So if they get knocked down to 50 or below health, they're going to get nimble, which means they evade. Uh, this can trigger once per squad member. So you know per battle, everybody will get one chance to get nimble as they get knocked down, which really gets them like a free hit, which is pretty nice. And then at max upgrade, when they drop below 50% health, it's going to guarantee a grant of the Nimble, so they're going to evade for sure. Um, and then light side characters, 
have a 50% chance to cleanse one Bane from themselves, and that can trigger once per, per squad member, and they gain 10% damage. So this passive kind of extra hit you get with the Nimble every time, a cleanse as you drop down, and then a little bit of extra damage. I would assume this damage is just four light side characters the entire time, although it's kind of just at the bottom here, almost like in a different looking font, kind of, not quite, but like it, I, it seems kind of like oddly tacked on there. So anyway, I think she's going to be a very interesting character. Again, I would absolutely expect with this being a marquee character like this, that she is going to be required for the Elrond unlock and be a part of the, the team that would play with Elrond. It would make total sense for Elro here, Eladin, Arwen, and Elrond. You could probably get creative with the fifth Elven slot, or who knows, maybe there'll be synergy with Strider that, that we haven't seen yet in another character, but I would guess they want you to run a full Rivendell team. Now, there is still a chance the Road to Rivendell team could be required to unlock Elrond, and this is just going to be used as just a random character that can then be used with Elrond when he's out, but I think they're going to try and capitalize on the excitement for the Legendary. Uh, we talked about it in our Elrond video, our marquee events and marquee characters are very normal, so We'll have to see exactly how they do it if they are going to give us Arwen at, say, three stars during the marquee event for free, and then you could open chests to get more. Uh, typically with CG, that's how things are done, is you you unlock them at a low star count in the event by playing it, and if you want to max them out and kind of max out an event coming up the first time around, you need to open those chests, which can get pricey. So if you're a free-to-play player, um, I just manage your expectations if this is required for Elrond you probably will not be unlocking Elrond the first go around. Now, they will eventually, if she's in, a, in an event, they'll eventually add her to her own node so we can farm her and get her. That's how it works. But for now, if it's for Elrond, it'll be a minute. But let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for Arwen here? Are you excited for the Elven Rivendell team? I think it's going to be kind of annoying, very probably tanky with lots of heals. If Elrond has his revive and his big heal he has, you've got cleanse, you've got defensive, you've got nimble. This squad's going to be tough to pin down, and especially if you're like me and you're running the Isengard team who does really well with so many Banes out on the field with mass cleanses like this, um, and, and I think Elves have pretty high resistance as it is, it's going to be a little bit annoying. But uh, either way, it's very exciting to see, and I love the consistent news we're getting kind of, you know, almost every other day, it seems like we're getting some kind of news or post or big update from them. So uh, this is, this is, I think it's pretty exciting. So let me know what you guys think. And as always, I'll see you all in another video.